Hello, welcome to From the South. I'm Laura Prada from the Telesur Studios in Caracas, Venezuela. We begin with the news. Stay with us. We begin in Venezuela, where a local government representative from Latin America and the Caribbean are meeting in the capital, Caracas, to discuss ways of encouraging participatory democracy. The workshops focus on ways on including organized communities in the decision-making processes of local governments. Our correspondent in Caracas, Paula Dragnik, has more information for us on the following report that she sent us earlier today. Welcome, Paola. It is very certainly fitting that here in the Hall of Social Heroes in the Foreign Ministry in Caracas, more than 100 local authorities from Latin America are meeting at the first meeting on local government and participatory democracy to share and exchange experiences. We heard the Foreign Minister Jorge Araza welcome them and he said that they are social heroes today because they come from the huge challenge of handing power back to the people. They will be meeting here in Caracas until Sunday, in the country that is under the most severe siege precisely because throughout the Bolivarian Revolution it has been trying to hand power back to the people. Thank you, Paola. And social movements have projected their politics of Jair Bolsonaro's during the Brazilian president's official visit to Argentina. Social and political movements took to the streets of Buenos Aires to reject President Bolsonaro's visit, saying the Brazilian head of state promotes hate. Demonstrators adopted the slogans including, Your hate is not welcome in Argentina, and Argentina rejects Bolsonaro. The visiting president backed his struggle in Argentine counterpart Mauricio Macri ahead of elections scheduled for October. Hopefully, the people of Brazil continue the path that they have started, which is to fill the streets with youth and teachers to reject the education reform. We believe that will be the case in unity with other people because the right-wing presidents of the Americas are seeking this unity in government to carry out Trump's work. We, the people united, will face this down in the street. And from Argentina, we go to Mexico, where President Andrés Manuel López Obrador believed a deal could be reached with the United States before next week to resolve a dispute over the migration policies. We have to apply our laws and avoid illegal migration. That's an approach. Doing this, respecting human rights. One of the things that should be known is that in these migrant caravans there are children, thousands of children, and children alone, without parents. And after the latest round of talk with the United States, Mexico has offered to send 6,000 troops to its border with Guatemala to avert U.S. President Donald Trump's threats of imposing import tariffs on Mexican goods. We have informed the government of the United States that the National Guard was made in Mexico, the National Guard was approved by the Constitution, and the National Guard also has the task of regional coordination along the southern border. And we have explained there are 6,000 men that will be deployed there. That's true. And in the United Kingdom, the Labour Party has won a highly contested by election in the English city of Petersboro with 31% of the vote. Union activist Lisa Forbes will take the seat that the Brexit Party had been expected to win. Peter Borough voted 64% in favor of the United Kingdom leaving the European Union in the 2016 Brexit referendum. The Labour Party ran on an anti-austerity platform, narrowly pushing Nigel Farage, Brexit Party, into second place and the Conservatives into third. Despite differing opinions across our city, the fact that the Brexit Party have been rejected here in Peterborough shows that the politics shows that the politics of division will not win. This is a result for every community in Peterborough. Tonight's victory is significant because it has shown that the politics of hope can win, regardless of the odds. 
And now, well, we move on to other topics. The Russian President Vladimir Putin and China's Xi Jinping have attended an international economic forum in St. Petersburg. The annual business meeting took place on Monday on day two of the Chinese leader's three-day state visit to Russia. On Wednesday, the two leaders signed a joint statement on the development of bilateral relations and partnership. Both parties agreed they share a great friendship. Meanwhile, during one of the sessions at the economic forum, Huawei announced plans to expand its cooperation with Russia following its United States blacklisting. We found that Huawei's hardware capabilities perfectly complemented uh, Russia's mass algorithms and the software applications development capabilities. We will increase our R&D investment and deep, deepen our cooperation with Russia. And meanwhile, the economic forum took place in St. Petersburg. China reaffirmed its commitment with, to development strategic ties with Russia. China's Foreign Affairs Ministry spokesperson Gen Xuan made the announcement at a media briefing in Beijing. China and Russia will further enhance their comprehensive strategic coordination and increase their support for each other on issues concerning their core interests. The two sides will focus their efforts on deepening the fusing of their interests and continue to boost the synergy between the Belt and Road Initiative and the Eurasian Economic Union development. The two countries will actively enhance people-to-people -people connectivity and solidly strengthen public support for their lasting friendship. The two nations will be more responsible and work harder to advance a multipolar world and democracy in international relations and join hands to build a new type of international relations and a community with a shared future for mankind. Time for our first break. Remember, you can follow us on Twitter at Telesur English and on my account at Laura Fitles. Stay with us. Para mantenerme saludable, yo corro. To keep myself healthy, I study. Ya nadie te hizo yis, trae como su estar. Para mantenerme saludable, yo bailo. Para mantenerme saludable, yo purifico mi espíritu a través del cuerpo. ¿Y tú? Guide your body. Tuesdays, only on Telesur. Our actions have an impact on the environment. It's our responsibility to change for the sake of our planet. Let's be part of this transition. Watch, preserve, and protect your green zone. Wednesday, only on Telesur. Acompañamos a los pueblos que resisten en cada una de sus luchas. Somos esa ventana que se abre para visibilizarlos entre fronteras. Thursday, only on Telesur. From here to beyond the south. From here to the Caribbean or further north. Where can I see news connecting the whole south? From Washington. From Mexico, from Caracas, from Quito, from Havana. You can always see the news of from a new vision, connecting the global south. Only on Sur.
are back and we go to African news because armed forces, police forces have used tear gas to disperse protesters in Malawi calling on the recently re-elected president to resign. Thousands of opposition supporters took to the streets in the capital Lilongwe. For the third day now, opposition parties say last month's elections where President Peter Mutarika narrowly won re-election was rigged. Most protesters support the main opposition Malawi Congress Party, which is challenging the Electoral Commission's decision of ratifying Mutarika's victory. You know, people are so bitter. People are so bitter. People were looking for change. People voted. People voted for change. But make with, the, with other people who don't wish this country well. Changed everything. This is the reason why the supporters of the Malawi Congress Party are all over in the streets. Now we go to the Democratic Republic of Congo. The World Health Organization has said that the Ebola outbreak in the country has been contained to a small area, but that does not mean the virus is retreating. The World Health Organization assist, Assistant Director General Mike Ryan said Ebola could flare up at any time but pointed to lower transmission rates and greater surveillance of the outbreak as positive news. More than 2,000 cases and about 1,000 deaths have been reported since the epidemic began in last August. We need to be exceptionally cautious, but we also need to have hope that the measures that have been put in place over the last six weeks and before are beginning to bear some operational fruit but we need to remain exceptionally cautious. We need to work very, very hard over the coming uh, weeks to ensure that any gains that we are making are sustained, and we need to be very aware that this virus will exploit any opportunity uh, that it gets to increase transmission, and most importantly in that is our continued fear is further violence uh, that would disrupt the operations in the field. We move on. Dozens of people are missing following landslide in Uganda, which killed at least six. With, with at least six, rescue workers are continuing, and authorities say that most of the missing have been accounted for. Landslides hit Babuda district on Tuesday after heavy rains caused the Tum River to burst. Around 100 families have been affected so far. Yeah, we feel upset. We feel so bad. We feel like we are not comfortable with the place and uh, there is too much that happens in this place and it, it makes our life hard. Um, the government has tried actually to resettle people from this place to other places, but because of the high population, because of the situations that we pass through, because we are born here and moving from this place to another place becomes hard. And the African Union has suspended Sudan membership of the regional entity until a civilian-led authority is established in the country. The African Union chairperson Patrick Kawupuwa said the council will impose punitive measures on individuals and entities that are obstructing the establishment of a civilian government following international condemnation. Sudan's ruling military council offered unconditional talks with protest leaders, but the opposition groups rejected the call for talks, saying the military uh, would not be trusted. All this happens uh, after the expel of president. Now we have more information on the following report sent by our correspondent in El Cairo, Egypt, Nayara Tardo. Welcome, Nayara. Explain us. The African Union's Council for Peace and Security decided to suspend Sudan from all activities in the regional body on Thursday as a consequence of the increasing violence in recent days. According to a statement made this morning, the suspension is immediate and will be in effect until a civilian government is in place in Sudan that will allow it to escape the current political crisis. The Sudanese government said earlier today that the death toll from the repression of protests on Monday at Khartoum Army headquarters was 46 people. However, the Sudanese medical committee said the real figure was 108, with more than 500 injured. There is a clear contradiction between the statistics offered by the government and the medical committee. Local media said that 40 bodies were found in the water of 
Denver Nile, with the suggestion being that they were thrown in there after re the repression on Monday by the military. Thank you, Nayar. I'm from Sudan. We talk about the meeting in Havana of foreign ministers from Angola and Cuba who met in Havana to strengthen cooperation ties between both countries. This is Manuel Augusto's first official visit and forms part of conversations to boost bilateral cooperation in education, health, construction, science and technology. The Angolan foreign minister, when meeting with his Cuban counterpart Bruno Rodriguez, announced the visit of the president of his country to Cuba at the end of the month of June. He also thanked the island for standing in solidarity with Angola relative to the illegal international blockades that intend to limit its, develop its developmental capacity. With this information, we go to a second and very short break. Stay tuned. Discover the cultural diversity that defines a continent. The place where art and tradition are part of the same nucleus. Artistic expressions. Values. Fridays, only on the resort. Follow the most important global events through a comprehensive perspective. With a team of journalists in 25 locations around the world. To convey our people's reality. From the South. Weekday, only on Telesur. Enjoy the best content in spaces where you will discover new perspectives, innovation, well-being, conservation, equity, traditions, a wide variety of contents that you will find on Telesur, the new source of Latin America and the Caribbean. back thousands of teachers march in the Chilean capital Santiago de Chile demanding better working conditions and rights they were also demonstrating against a government decision to eliminate compulsory subjects such as history and physical education public school teachers who have been in on a strike since Monday chanted and waved banners as they marched along Santiago's main avenue and stopped in front of the headquarters of the Ministry of Education Hundreds of students joined the protest in support of teachers. Today, we are defending the historic demands of our union. At the same time, defending labor rights and the teachers. And teachers are calling for equality in working conditions, better benefits and the ending of the so-called double evaluation process, which considers both their attendance and their performances. 
We are marching for our demand for labor rights, which for many years have not Lawyers for the former Brazilian president, Luis Ignacio da Silva, are bringing a second motion against the current justice minister, Sergio Moro, for illegal behavior. They say Moro illegally recorded conversations between Lula and his defense team when he was the judge in charge of the case against him. Our correspondent in Sao Paulo, Brian Mir, has more details for us in the following report he sent us later. Welcome, Brian. The defense team for former Brazilian President Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva filed a motion to dismiss all charges against the former president related to the Guarujá apartment for which he has been imprisoned with a sentence of 12 years uh, and held as a prisoner in solitary confinement since April 2018. Now this is the second motion to dismiss uh, filed by Lula's defense team against prosecutor Sergio Moro for illegal behavior. The first was due to the United States Department of Justice public admission that they were involved in informal communication with Sergio Moro and the Lava Jato prosecution team, which is a crime in Brazil. And these, this new motion to dismiss is based on the fact that Sergio Moro illegally wiretapped 14 hours of telephone conversations between Lula's defense team and the former president and used these uh, recordings to create an org chart to map out every possible move that they could make according to what the defense team was planning on doing. They filed a motion to dismiss and only time will tell if all of these charges will be thrown out against the former president. Thank you, Brian. I'm from Brazil. We go to Colombia, where a preliminary investigation into the Odebrecht corruption case will be opened against former President Juan Manuel Santos. A committee from the lower house is investigating whether Santos accepted illegal campaign contributions from Odebrecht in 2014. The decision follows a journalist published an interview last week with former Senator Bernardo Elias Vidal, who is currently serving time in prison for his involvement in the scandal. Elias said he contacted a person who was the director of Santos' campaign, who he said knew perfectly well the money came from Odebrecht to secure, to secure his re-election in 2014. And we continue talking about Colombia because in the Senate, they, they have agreed to promote an army general who has been accused of overseeing extrajudicial executions between 2004 and 2006. Our correspondent in Bogota, Jose Manuel Jiménez, has the details for us on the following report. Welcome, Jose Manuel. Divisions among lawmakers have been exposed after the Senate endorsed the promotion of controversial Colombian Army Commander General Nicasio Martinez. The decision was made during Congress plenary session with 64 votes in favor of the promotion and one against the move. This represented a triumph for the government and especially for the members of the armed forces. However, the opposition walked out of the Congress in protest against the vote. The vote was taken after an intense debate about the controversial general, who is said to have led a brigade accused of killing civilians. He has also been accused of alleged irregularities by way of false instructions he gave to the military. During the plenary session, Senator Antonio Sanguina had asked a majority of the government opposition voted no. After Wednesday's plenary session, Martinez announced that he will clear up all the allegations against him, which are alleged to have been taking place between 2004 and 2006. As you may recall, the Army commander has previously been investigated by the state prosecutor's office for corruption. The Attorney General has also opened a probe into Martinez, concerning recent international media reports linking Martinez to a number of extrajudicial executions in Colombia. In the past, the Army General has also been accused of having paramilitary links and has even been named in a drug trafficking probe. Certainly, the country hopes that General Nicasio Martinez answers this avalanche of allegations against him. Thank you, Jose Manuel. And from Colombia, we now go to the Caribbean. A new policy on gender school in, has been divided public opinion in the Dominican Republic. What is so controversial about this new law? We have more on the following report for you. An order to implement gender policies in all schools in the Dominican Republic has stirred up a mounting controversy. 
It is right for the Ministry of Education to implement a gender policy because obviously we want to eliminate domestic violence from our schools and these children will be the adults of tomorrow. The four-page order from the ministry talks about equality between men and women and puts it in the context of the country's development plan and its commitments under international agreements on gender. The conservative sectors in the country are gearing up around this and trying to gather support, just like they do around other issues like the Haitian question. They're trying to counter anything to do with a gender focus or gender equality by dismissing it as gender ideology. The ministry's initiative has been welcomed by one part of Dominican society and slated by another. The churches claim that talking about gender in schools means the defending LGBTIQ rights, even though the document only refers to gender equality. We defend parents whose rights are protected in the Constitution, but also poor Dominican children. We must protect their freedom of education from an ideological current that wants to indoctrinate them and wipe out the natural differences between men and women. They want to teach sexual preferences to our children, and sexual preference is not an identity. The debate on implementing gender policies in schools has reached the Supreme Administrative Court, where different social groups are demanding that the order from the ministry be revoked. We are in a pre-electoral period in our country, and that's why some people are taking advantage of this to make a show and win support. They represent the most conservative, racist, and homophobic sectors of Dominican society. The order from the Ministry of Education puts emphasis on a gender policy that can help promote non-sexist education and help overcome the gender stereotypes that are still common in the country. Like this, we come to the end to the news, this news brief, but you can find this and much more other stories on our website, English. Net, where of course you can read opinion articles, watch our special interviews and find much more material that we produce especially for your information. Like this, you know, you can continue with Telesur connecting the global thousand. Till next time, thank you for watching.